Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. Today, I'd like to go even further into Pongjin, and this time explore uh, the yin side of that. Both Jonathan and Sharon brought up questions last time that uh, were very uh, helpful. And, uh, and we want to, you know, the stuff we've talked about, but I'd like to go a little deeper into that and actually emphasize that because the that yin component that feeds the pong jin is is useful for everything else and and all day every day and, and just one of those it's it's a, the more you can be able to to create that the separation and holding the poles in opposition, the more energy you can create and generate. So we're gonna to get to that um, and, uh, and, and play around with, with actually exploring the effects of that and, and how, to, how to really bring awareness to, to the end because it's not something that is addressed ordinarily. And uh, so I wanna get into that. But first I want to talk a little bit about the, um, the active ingredient that is making all this possible, and that is the uh, this idea of feeling, because it is what brings our awareness to the to the body mind and creates that body mind spirit integration. And uh, it brought to mind something that uh, I read decades ago, um, and. I'm, since it was decades ago, I may be botching the story a little bit, but the idea is still appropriate for what we're doing. It's still a good metaphor for what we're doing here. And uh, I think the book was Kurt Vonnegut's uh, Galapagos. I think that was the novel. And uh, there was an idea that, that he posed there that kind of stuck with me, and, and I may be butchering it, but I'm going to say it anyway. The uh, idea here is that uh, uh, the book was written from the perspective of, of, I think, like a million years in the future, if I recall. And um, there's some witness to the events of, of what's happening on planet Earth. And apparently, at that point, humans had kind of outlived their, their evolutionary usefulness. And the primary bug was the fact that they had gotten so caught up in excessive rationality and excessive thinking that they kind of imploded in on themselves and they were unable to, to complete their mission as, as, as an evolutionary vehicle. And the, the thing that, the, the metaphor that kind of really stuck out for me was talking about the dolphin. And the, the idea was that the dolphin at least in, 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 in at that time and in, in this book was the, uh, their whole body was an erogenous zone. So that as they swam through the, through the, the sea, then they're constantly being tickled by, by the water and, and, and the feeling there. And we're, and <laughs> thank you, Jonathan. So, uh, allowing them to smile a lot as a result of being <laughs> being constantly stimulated and and thrilled by the the ever present medium in which they are swimming so if we can move in that direction of being shifting out of excessive thinking and be able to make the transition to integrating thinking with the feeling so that we're actually being tickled by everything in our lives. We're not, then we no, no longer get stuck in our heads and we can feel the air. We can feel this medium in which we are swimming and you feel your the shirt on your back, you feel the ground under your feet, you feel the chair you're sitting in, you feel your hair, you feel your eyebrows, you feel everything. And when you do that, it does not diminish your intellectual capacity at all. In fact, it enhances it by allowing you to shift into a whole brain coherence. And then you can actually 
enhance your capacity to think while thinking is not your master. It's not your, your uh, does not dominate your life. So um, we use that as our access to the um, this super conscious state that allows us to be aware and know what's going on in many different places within the body and also our external environment without necessarily locking attention onto any one specific thing. Or we can shift our attention so we can think of many specific things. So the, uh, but we're not stuck there. The attention doesn't get stuck there. So the, um, we, we get there, you know, through that capacity to, to feel. And so that is our, our, our tool to make that happen. So when we're going into say the, the, the Pong Jin, which is that up and out expanding energy, we are then becoming more and more aware of, of the distinctions at a very fundamental level. And to the point where you can then start to notice substantial and insubstantial. You start to feel things which are not necessarily uh, graspable by your five senses. Um, I remember, I've told this story before, but it, it's apropos of this situation. That is, you know, I remember the first time I visited uh, Master Wayson Liao out in, uh, near Chicago. And uh, I wrote about this in, in the uh, Western Gate. And he was talking about, okay, would you like to, we were, we were talking for a while and, and he said, would you like a demonstration of Pong Jin? And I said, sure. And he just lightly put his fingers on my chest and, and ba-boom, I was launched into the wall behind me and fell down to the ground. And it was like, whoa, because he, there was no physical force in the, uh, in what he was doing. So that was where the Pong Jin had, had moved to such a level of insubstantiality that the physicality was reduced to, you know, very small. So, uh, you know, one of the things that Master Yong Fu Kui, you know, would, would tell me as a way of getting to that level of, of expression, you start off by having like 90% body and 10% chi. And then you slowly kind of work it so that it becomes more 50-50 and then more 80-20 where you have 80% chi and 20% and body. And there's a point where you make a jump and you go from chi to shen or spirit. And then that same process where you are start off with very low level of Shen, but then you gradually increase that so that you become like, in the case of Wei Sun Liao in this case, you know, it would be a way of describing what he was doing where he was, he was operating at about 80% Shen and 20% energy and almost zero body, almost zero physicality. But we don't just go there. We don't just, just like, oh, we're going to, I'm just going right to the Shen place and forget all that. It's uh, you kind of work your way up so that you learn how to, you learn how to express Jin first by feeling into the tensegrity of your connective tissue system, feeling that body mind integration, which then awakens Shen body, mind, spirit integration, and you move in the direction of more and more insubstantial, but not as a, uh, uh, not as a denial of substantiality, but just as an alternative to it. So that you are capable of both. You're capable of, of the substantial aspects, that is the power, you know, like Cheng Man Cheng, you know, would, would stand there and hold off, you know, 
10 people and 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 many other people have, have demonstrated this uh, this kind of power where you're able to do that you know, and you the more insubstantial you're able to to move the more you're able to move into that that place where you are feeling the insubstantiality and allowing that to dominate the the more the less effort that you look like you're exerting in the in the situation. So all this is a process that we're we're engaged in exploring. And what I'm trying to do is kind of draw a map, you know, for the lower levels of this exploration. How do we get from zero to one? And then you know that's once you get to one, it's like oh okay, you start to have a an idea of the direction things are going. It's that that the biggest step is from zero to one. So the uh, exploration we're going to do with the with the Pongjin. We've already for the last two weeks we've been exploring the substantial aspect. That is the business end of of it, like with the ward off posture, where you're using the the forearm and the wrist as the physical substantial parts, which are useful for creating that ward off power. But what drives it is the Pong Jin, the insubstantial, expansive quality. And in the Wei Sun Liao case, you know, the that insubstantial was, you know, turned up to 11. And it, it felt really, you know, it felt very strong, even though it was a more nothing than something. So um, in the we were talking about the yin side. It goes back to the idea that all energy is created by poles in opposition. That is two things, two points in space, two, two pieces of stuff, two or more pieces of stuff are expressing a relationship to each other. And that relationship requires an observer requires somebody who says, oh yeah, that and that, and oh, there's something happening between them. Up to that point, it's just what's going on. But whenever you are able to identify the stuff, then you're able to identify the non-stuff that forms their relationship. That's a very abstract way of talking about it, but it kind of, I think it's useful to be able to understand those terms. Because if I reach out with my right hand, that's there's a certain just by reaching out there is a relationship of my hand with my body it is reaching out then i reach out with my left hand oh and that's that also establishes it and then i say okay right hand and left hand let's have a that's it let's talk and so at that point the relationship includes the opposition between the two hands that creates a charge or a, an energy between the two. The degree that I can say, okay, you guys, I want one to be positive, one to be negative, and then you can kind of create a field as a result of that. And that's all the stuff we're doing follows that principle. We're creating that. So in, in a ward off posture, say, we're going to, like say we go through this thing and the business end is, say, in this case, my left arm is reaching out, and that extension creates its own energy. But if I want to enhance that, I can, uh, I can pull my right hand away from that. So I'm reaching out with elbows, both my elbows, and now I I can actually feel the chi in the hands as I do that. And that is an indicator that something's going on. If I can include tensegrity, I can feel relax into the intrinsic structure of the body as I do that and reach, then I have this capacity to generate more energy and also have an effective power that comes out of that. So this is the theory behind all this stuff that we're, we'll be doing. And um, one other concept there that, that we'll get back to 
again in other other talks, but the what lies at the root of this is the concept of reaching. You know, oftentimes people say, oh, you just need to relax and everything be fine. It's like, no, that the relaxation just enables you to get out of your own way. Now you got to do something. What do you do? You reach. That is, you extend awareness from a point that you're occupying and extending out. You're standing away from that point you're occupying. So we have two things there. We have to first occupy a point in space and time. We have to be here now, or another way of saying it is presence. How much am I willing to occupy space and time? And that includes embodiment, that includes physicality. That, so to the extent that I can be here, present, that enhances my ability to do anything, but it doesn't stop there. Presence in and of itself will not get you very far. It, it is the extension from that point, that stable point, your ability to occupy that point in space and time. Then from there, you extend, you reach. And reach is not just, re, not just extending out, but there is a reach has a quality of extending to connect to reach something, to reach the distant shore, to reach for that cup of tea. There is a, an intention there to make contact and to engage the object of your reaching. So we have to have a separation between me and stuff in order for me to reach to stuff. If I am the stuff and everything is one and whatever, that's fine. And it's, it produces a certain state of mind, but it doesn't get you very far. It doesn't allow for any exchange of energy. There has to be some separation for energy to exist. And, that, and the intention to extend and connect is the reaching part. So when I say reach with your elbows, there is an extension there. So just, we covered this a little bit last week, but let's just, if you, if you just put your hand on your chest here, just, just put like that and just extend your elbow down, reach down with your elbow, keeping your arm against the shoulder that disconnects the shoulder. So you can feel the elbow reaching down as you do that. And then you re relax and then you reach again. So you can feel the lengthening of the connective tissue as you do that. And you do extend it again. So we're unlocking the shoulder. We're getting rid of the shoulder tension as we do that. You go to the other side and do the same thing on your other side. You reach down and you can feel your shoulder joint opening as you do that. When you do that, we activate a very powerful energy, the shoulder gate in Tai Chi. It's the eighth gate and when we do that, it's like things become very integrated and very powerful. So we do that reaching with those elbows. So that, that creates, opens that shoulder. So we have the, the uh, Joe energy, the elbow gate and the cow energy of the shoulder gate. We get those together and bam, suddenly new ball game. So let's uh, play with that. Let's stand up. We'll do a little meditation. We'll do a little three pillars meditation. Then we'll get into the uh, some explore exploration of the yin side of Pong. Take a moment and empty out to give yourself permission to be where exactly where you are doing exactly what you're doing. Let go of any other agendas you might have.
feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, spiral down to the left and load up your right quad. You're sinking into the right leg, turn to the right. Pick up the left heel and step out about a hip width. Feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee, spiral down to the right and turn back to center. So let's just go over that three pillars meditation as a way of establishing our energetic connection to the earth and sky, to feel the big chi and to feel the energetic coherence, central equilibrium and unkink the hoses. Feel the balls of your feet. Allow your body to relax and just kind of settle in as if your feet are sand and they're just spreading out and just dumping down and just creating this pile of sand there and you're just sinking down into that. Knees are unlocked. But continue to sink to get very sung. Everything just releasing down. But we're going to create a pole in opposition here by reaching with the crown of the head without pushing away from the earth. So we're continuing to sink. Everything below the waist is sinking down. And reach up with the crown of the head and feel that pulling up, lengthening the spine. Tuck in the chin. And open the jade pillow gate at the base of the skull. Notice that immediately your hands start to fill up just by opening up the jade pillow gate. Because when we do that, we are activating the jingshan, the spirit of vitality. So here we are, we're filling up. The yin chi of the earth rising, the yang chi of the heavens descending, plugging into the big chi. Relax your lower back and allow your coccyx to drop, your tailbone. When you do that, that levels out your pelvis, your pelvic bowl levels out and releases tension in your lower back. Continue to feel your feet sinking into the earth. Continue to feel your the crown reaching up, activating the knee one. Reach with the clavicular notch, your Right there at the base of your neck, your throat. Feel that lifting up and opening your shoulders, opening your chest, feeling that expansion. Reach with your elbows. Feel that. Feel them opening your shoulder joints as you do that. And feel your hands filling up with chi as you do that. And chi is the insubstantial aspect, and there's also the substantial aspect as they fill up also with, with blood as you increase your, the circulation in your hands just by bringing your awareness there. Spiral down to the left, release your quad, spiral down to the right. So you're releasing the quad, getting very sung quad. You're sitting down into your legs, all the while reaching up for the crown. Reach with your elbows, feel your index fingers. Feel the energetic coherence throughout the whole system. 
activating the tensegrity of the whole system, of your connective tissue system. Now feel your elbows, reach out slightly with your right elbow and feel that. Just feel the effect that that has at a very subtle level. Notice the changes that occur at, the, at an insubstantial and an energetic level in your body when you do that. Now, without letting go of that, reach out with your left elbow and feel them reaching in opposite directions and feel the enhanced chi flow in your hands as you do that. Point with your right index finger, feel your right elbow, reach with your right wrist, extend that upward, and reach out with the fingers. So that's a, a yang extension. Now feel your left elbow, your left wrist, and reach down with the fingers on your left hand. So we're doing both at the same time. You feel the fingers of your right hand, feel the fingers of your left hand. And notice those poles in opposition. Feel the crown of your head, feel your, the balls of your feet. Feel those poles in opposition. And feel your whole body mind being filled up with chi as you do this. Now feel the index finger of your left hand, feel your left elbow, and reach up with your left wrist. And as you do that, simultaneously reach down with your right elbow, your right wrist, and feel both of those at the same time. So the left hand is now becoming yang, the right hand is becoming yin. So we're having those poles in opposition and we're creating another flow. Feel the index finger of your right hand, your right wrist, right elbow, reach with that. Left elbow, left wrist coming down. Feel those two together. And notice how that they are part of one system. And there's a flow happening between them. And that's what we're going to do with the, with the ward off posture, a simplified ward off posture. We want to feel that yang expansion, but we also want to feel the yin, which is moving in the opposite direction and creating a effortless power just by doing that. So bring your right hand down, elbow, wrist. So feel the ball of the right foot. Set the right knee, spiral down to the right, and turn, pivot on the left heel. So you're turning to the left. Now feel the ball of the left foot, push your left knee out, set that, and feel yourself sinking down in. So you're releasing down, sinking down in. Reach with that left elbow. Left wrist, 
rotate the forearm and turn. As you do that, reach down with the right hand. So as you're extending out with the left arm, you're reaching down with the left, or with the right hand. Feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee, spiral down to the left, and sink into that. Step out a little bit with the right foot. Feel the ball of the right foot, push your right knee out, set that. Use your quad spiral down to the left, loading up the right quad, and then reach with your right elbow, reach with your left elbow. Feel both shoulder joints opening up as you do that. And then as you turn your body, you're reaching with the wrist. Notice that the fingers are relaxed. I'm pulling down with my left hand. So I'm pulling back with my left elbow, my left wrist, my left hand, and coming out and reaching out. So the left hand is pulling back. The right hand is reaching forward. Feel those poles in opposition and feel the circuit that's being generated. You're reaching with both elbows so much so that you feel the, the space between your shoulder blades. Feel the connection there. Feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, spiral down to the right. Drop your left hand. Pivot on your left heel. Feel the ball of the left foot. Push your left knee out, set the left knee, spiral down to the right. So you're loading up the left quad. Feel both elbows. They're reaching in opposite directions and feel the energy that's being generated by that. So feel the yin side here. I want to particularly feel the the negative pole on this, as your left arm comes up, feel the wrist, feel your yin hand, feel the left, right elbow reaching down, right wrist, and turn, reaching down with the right hand and feeding the left hand with those poles in opposition. Feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee, spiral down to the left. Pivot on your right heel. Feel the ball, set the knee, spiral down to the left. Reach with both elbows. So we're doing this like a classic ward off right here. So the rotate forearm, wrist, reaching with the right wrist, pulling back with the left elbow. Feel the yin hand, feel the yin arm. Feel the both shoulder joints opening. The muscles are very relaxed, even though there is extension. So there's a tensegrity without muscular tension. We're going to reverse it this time. We're going to spiral down. We're going to do like a mirror image kind of thing. Pivot on your left heel. Left ball, set the left knee, spiral down to the right. And this time we're going to reach with both elbows. Feel that. The yin, feel the yang. Feel the wrist. And turn. This time the right hand stays up like, like we do with the, with the other one. And we turn, we're pulling back with the right elbow, reaching out with the left forearm. So you can feel there's, a, even though there's space between the hands, you can feel the, the field that you're, that's being generated by those poles in opposition. You can generate quite a bit of, of chi and, and 
it can become quite palpable if you work at it. So feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee spiral down to the left. Pivot on the right heel, right ball, set the right knee spiral down to the left. Reach with both elbows. Reach with the wrist. Pulling away, and this time the left hand comes down. And reach with the right forearm, the right wrist. Opening, reaching with the elbows, reaching with the wrist, reaching with the fingers, reaching with the crown of your head. Spiral down to the right, pivot on your left heel, left ball, set the left knee, spiral down to the right, reach with both elbows, wrist, and turn. Feel those poles in opposition. down to the left, pivot, right ball, set the right knee, reach with the elbows, open the shoulder joints, reach with the wrist and turn. Uh, this one, we're gonna come down on this like that. Feel that extension, feel the yin. Feel how the yin complements the yang and empowers it. Right ball, set the right knee, spiral down, pivot. Left ball, set the left knee, spiral down to the right. Reach with the elbows, reach with the wrists and turn. And just hold that for a moment. Let's come down, turn, step in. Deep breath. And just fear the chi. Feel into the stillness. Just take that in for a minute. Thank you. Take a seat, please. <laughs> How'd that go? Ah, uh, good. Wonderful. Very good. Yeah. Really crazy, full of energy. 
Yeah, big. And I expanded so much that I was in Diane's window for a minute there. I was just... <laughs> Diane was moving and it was like, Diane was moving in my window or I was in Diane's window. <laughs> Sorry, Diane. <laughs> invasion, invasion. I, I agree wholeheartedly. I felt a lot, you know, I just, you know, I, I'm still just coming off my brace. So my left, but I can tell you, I could feel the power in the push and I don't nothing about nothing, but I know that it works. Great. Terrific. It feel, it, feel, it, it really feels good. I can feel the power. I can feel the pulling. I get the concept and I can just only just, you know, it's awesome. Great, great. Um, cool. Uh, we covered a lot of a uh, lot of stuff there. So, uh, any questions on, on any of that? Uh, any of that backstory that uh, we need to uh, to explore? Did you have your hand up, Sam? Yes, uh, I did. The only, one thing I noticed with doing it this way and I know I'm still going in the wrong direction sometimes but I feel like uh, I'm on the balls of my feet and I'm not rocking as much as I I normally do like I, there's a certain amount of rocking now it's you know, quiet it's like maybe it's right there so right. That, that's the only comment I would like to make on that cool yes excellent yes that's a very common stand. So I find myself, I found myself rocking like all over the place, just keeping balance as I'm going through it at the same time, feeling the power and trying to like keep it under control. But now that your feet are planted, is that like a much more solid rooted feeling? Cause I'm like trying to feel my feet, stand my balls, my toes being agile and I can feel the power. And I visually saw myself rocking on the camera. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Jonathan. So it's not like an electromagnetic field. It actually is an electromagnetic field. Yes. A bioelectromagnetic field that we're creating because they are opposing magnets. I don't know what else it can be, but an actual electromagnetic field, which I, I don't think of that myself in terms of that so much, but it does seem that's what it is, yes? I think that is part of it, but not all of it. I think that's, you know, it's the, if you think of like visible light, that yeah, it's a very tiny part of the, of, of the electromagnetic spectrum. So right. we, you know, there's so much more going on than we are capable of knowing with our, you know, even with our most um, sophisticated <laughs> scientific instruments. We can assume that everything we can measure is all that's there, or we can also make the assumption that, well, we've been figuring this stuff as we've been going along forever. So maybe there is more. <laughs> that we are incapable of having a machine to measure just yet. And so and that's the assumption that I make. So when we talk about chi, um, I believe that electromagnetic field is one aspect of it. And it's one of the more measurable ones is also one of the more, um, one of the grosser forms of energy that is available. But there is my sense you know, particularly having been doing this for a long time, is there's so much more that we're just incapable of, of expressing in any scientific terms that we know yet. And, uh, but that's not to say that we won't find other ways of talking about it. But I think in order to be able to engage in that conversation, we have to do something that is, um, kind of off limits for scientific materialism. And that is to allow consciousness into the story. 
that until we allow that to happen, a little till we include that as a as an active participant in this, we're not going to be able to to describe the subtle energies which go far beyond that which is measurable by machine. So that's that's my I opinion accept, on that. I, I I accept. I get all that. Uh, but it's no small feat to create biomagnetic electric energy. It's I agree. It's almost as if, it's almost as if like we're plugging ourselves in, like if 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 we were a machine on one very small level, and now we're what the machine's supposed to be doing, responding with energy. With like, what's a machine if you don't plug it in? We're much more than machines, but what are we? I mean, the possibilities of what we are when we plug ourselves in seem yet to be explored because we don't go around the day with poles in opposition. We're, we're, we're contracted away from that. It's a novel feeling. We come here on Tuesdays and do it. I mean, I try, you know, hanging out with you a lot gives me, you know, more incentive to do it while I'm sitting watching TV or whatever. But it does seem if we do this all day, creating even at this low level, biomagnetic electric energy is a tremendous thing. A simple thing to do because of the way you teach it, but a tremendous thing, not a small thing. If it's done throughout the day, it's like plugging a machine in to one degree. And the simplicity of becoming dolphins <laughs> swimming through the air and getting our rocks off by, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. by just yeah. feeling into, you know, everything that's going on is, uh, you know, we get those dolphin smiles on our faces because uh, yeah, it yeah. just it, we're cultivating this on a... Uh, moment by moment basis. And this allows for, for the happy to come. <laughs> and we like the happy. The happy is good. If I can add on top of that, Jonathan hit it right on the head. And Rick, with the dolphin, that's a great analogy. And all I know is it's a real thing. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thank you. I mean, <laughs> it's you, a real Jonathan. thing. It's a real feeling for me. And I don't know if any of you uh, six or seven folks that are on this call live in Southern California, but the only thing that I can compare that comes close are in the falls when the Santa Ana's start to blow and you start getting the positive ion charge of the Santa Ana winds that are funneling down to the canyons. I mean, there's been so many novels written over the people are going crazy because of the, the full moons and the Santa Ana winds and murdering, you know, their spouses and stuff. But it's a, it's a real thing as well. But I got to tell you, you know, I only did it probably a, not much more than a half with, you know, still on the recoup, but that is something really cool to revisit because that really did a lot for me. As far as taking me to another level, I am so in the deep end of the pool. Just none of you guys leave because if there's no fucking life preserver, I'm just going to drown. Man. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I, I completely feel polls in opposition. I know, I know exactly what you mean. But what I always think of this as is connection. Right, because it's 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 not pulling apart; it's linking together in in the way I feel, and I feel like a, a larger connection across my whole body through my you know through connecting to my poles in opposition. So you you can go around throughout the day connecting like your the the pieces of your body in various ways without having to think about pulling apart or at least that's what i do sometimes for practice i don't know if that makes sense are you disassembling <laughs> uh, no i'm staying connected <laughs> i mean it's, it's, it's kind of a different way of saying the same thing but it adds in in my mind it just makes it um kind of more positive than um than uh conflictual I got to tell you, it's a great exercise to practice when you're standing in line along the three pillars of just working your arms. I mean, hey, you're never going to see these folks again anyway. <laughs> well, I, that's a good good question there, Lynn. Um, 
a good point, and can be both. And, 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 and I believe when I'm talking about coherence, that's kind of connection, isn't it? That's another way of saying connection. So that we're starting with that. We're starting with, we're starting from wholeness. And wholeness in and of itself is, is grand. It just, you, <laughs> you should do it many times a day. Uh, but if you stop there, if you go into a state of oneness, you know, connection, then you are, uh, there's no movement, there's no energy being created because it's, it's, it's all contained. So it is both. So you're going from that state of wholeness, connection or integration and saying, okay, going from one, you know, to other, you know, from, so be able to extend out from that, that unified state to create a, uh, you know, in electrical terms, an ionic imbalance, you're creating, you know, you're, you're creating something that you're, you're either got too many electrons or, or too little, you're, you're, you're need something to connect to. And that's what creates, that's what creates electrical flow is those, that flow of ions there. So the, uh, so that same thing here, we're going from wholeness or connection or that, that thing to also to reaching out and creating separation and, and bridging that separation. And that's the, uh, it's that bridging the, of the separation, which is the connecting up, reaching that, yeah, that creates the, creates yeah. the so we're going full circle yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. So this is all, all pieces of the puzzle is we don't want to just go into any one, just a, a state, no matter how benign that state and stay there. We want to, to go to that state and pulse out and reach out and touch someone and pull back and reach out in the other direction and touch someone. So that's the, uh, I think that that's the game. I think of, of being human is to include all those factors to be able to reach and withdraw and that, that, expansion contraction yin yang is 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 the game and as long as we are in accord with that game then we feel in the flow we feel like oh yeah okay this is this is we're 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 making it happen and uh jonathan yes i'm as you say and you can infuse any lost position with that coherence without, even before you move by some of the things you're telling us, the finger, the elbow, like if you find yourself in whatever you can, before you like jump out of it, you can feel the coherence, the expansion before you make any movement. And you can do that all day too. Yes, absolutely. Diane, you had something. I was just, I wanted to make sure I understood so that as we set up this tensegrity and this connection within ourselves, feeling the poles in various places, when we reach out, when we are expanding to meet another person, another thing, we are setting up yet another continuous circle, right? We are setting up another polarity. So it's polarity and then additional polarities. Is that right? Right. So, okay. so any any two things that you can think about, you know, have the potential for creating energy between them. So anything you can be conscious of, it mm -hmm. has the potential for for generating a chi flow. So within your own system, I reach out like this. I feel that polarity, which creates a chi flow within my system. So the stagnation of my chi disappears for a moment and ah there's 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 the happiness of 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 being cheerful and then if i say <laughs> oh i want to reach over and, and touch maria and she <laughs> there is that connection there that just by the very fact of reaching even across the room even if we're not physically touching there is a crackling of of energy and we all heard her giggle. 
<laughs> so that there is so uh, so yes, and I, I believe that I believe that that is that's the game. You know, if you want to break it down into really simple terms, you know, it's a little, a little too reductionist, but it's it's that is uh, you know that that that's a one map for drawing the the energy connection between stuff is 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 by doing it that way. There's lots of and other that's energy. also the that's also the pung right that sense of reaching out and setting up that current right right okay and but if you don't have the yin pullback then your pong is is limited right. to the idea that body and an arm are somehow different and you're creating a separation between those two right so that so that that's you're extending out from body which is which creates one type of energy which is by far junior to oh the two poles in opposition and both hands are are moons around the jupiter of of, of the body so it's you know it, it we get into uh levels upon levels there and to the extent that we can, in a super conscious state, be mindful mm -hmm. of more and more pieces of these puzzles as we as we play with them, the we create new new opportunities, new possibilities. Great question. Thank you, everybody. It's great. great. Anybody else? Uh, okay. Thank you all so much. Love you all. Thank you, Rick. Love you, Love you, Maria. Maria. Thank, Thank you, Maria.